right now on the Miguel and Holly and Hot 101.5 Facebook page for our Miguel and Holly family meeting. So in the past, what, how long has it been since March? Uh, so many of you in the Miguel and Holly fam have had to change the way that you work. You've had to change the way that you operate your life yeah. because of this funny little thing that we found out about at the beginning of the year called coronavirus slash COVID-19. Uh -huh. So a lot of different radio stations and morning shows and you working from home have been having to work from home in this new reality. And we made a decision early on that for the continuity of the show and the quality of what we could bring to you as long as possible, we would try to do the show from work as long as possible because there's so many moving parts and pieces. Holly? And it was actually really great because uh, where we work, CMG had, had done an amazing job of um, like shutting down the building yeah. uh, except only for on-air personalities. I mean, there's a handful of people going in that huge building because most of our coworkers like sales or promotions or management, they're all working from home. It was only the on-air personalities that were allowed to go in. So with all of the proper precautions that we have tried to take that you and your families have tried to take, sometimes it just comes down to chance, unfortunately. So last week after the Halloween weekend on Monday when the weather changed, I started to feel um, my uh, sinuses act up. And usually like, you know, a 85 year old grandpa from Atlanta that I grew up with, I'd be like, Ooh, Lord, I feel the weather changing. <laughs> my face is starting to hurt. Something not good, girl. So that's what I thought. My sinuses are acting up. There was no cough, nothing crazy. I just had the feel like I want to beat my face in a little bit. And so then the election happened on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, I said, You know what? Let's just go ahead because it's free at the Trop um, in downtown St. Pete. Let's just go ahead and get a quick little test just so we can calm our fears and be fine. Well, then Thursday, as I'm sitting at home, um, getting some stuff ready for Friday show, I get an email that says, your results are ready. And I'm like, all right, cool. Let's just click on it. And then when you clicked on the results, it says COVID detected. And then I was like, wait, no, this is a mistake. That can't be. So then I'm like, Abe, fiance, does this say? And he goes, Okay, so first off, go put on a mask. Uh, um, and yes, it says that it has you have have coronavirus. You so got it. the Rona. I got the Rona, girl. So then that started this whole chain reaction of having to inform everyone that I had been around over the past few days. Um, and I have to admit, it there's a, a feel a little shame in that yeah. because then all of a sudden you have to like call all these people that you had been around and you feel sort of irresponsible. But thankfully, a lot of people that I had been around over the past two days, we had masks on. We were properly social distancing. Like I had a doctor's appointment and my doctor was like at Medi Weight Loss and she was like, you are fine. You had a mask on, you washed your hands, you had hand sanitizer. I'm not in fear. We're all going to get tested and they have been tested and they're fine. And so this is what happens when you have all these precautions in place to make sure that everything is okay. Well, with right. that being said, we've been in an airtight studio together for ever. And so Holly, this is where you come into place. Hey there. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to cut to the chase. I also have the coronavirus. But yes. Let me back up and see. And uh, explain, <laughs> explain how that goes. Um, it's, it's, it's a weird combination of things. So um, on Wednesday night, I was alerted that someone in our building also had uh, coronavirus, but it wasn't uh, Miguel because obviously he didn't know by then. So on Thursday, I said, oh, did you hear like there's someone else in our building? We should get tested. And Miguel was like, oh, I already got tested yesterday. And I was like, whoa, OK, well, let me get <laughs> on it then. So I went to the trop as well on Thursday and I got a rapid test, which came back negative. So mm. I was like, oh, God, maybe I'm immune. No. <laughs> uh, so then, um, and I was okay. Like I hadn't been feeling anything crazy. Although what I will say, and this, you know what sucks? 
to you listening, just please know this, is that um, 2020, hindsight is 2020. So I realized that that morning I had woken up, um, I like my allergies are all off and on. My nose was a little stuffy and I had a weird, like kind of metallic-y taste when I woke up, like my mouth was dry. But mm. I was like, whatever. That was the only thing that was possibly wrong. And I didn't even give it a second thought. So on Thursday, I got the negative test. Um, and then, you know, Thursday, is that the day, Miguel, that yours came back? Mm-hmm, um, Thursday afternoon. I went again on Friday and got another negative test. Mm. So by then I was like, I really don't think anything is wrong. I mean, clearly I'm, I'm doing well. Um, and then, uh, but see Friday, I also took a PCR test, which is the non-rapid test. Right. And so, because I had had two negative tests at that point, I was like, as long as I'm, you know, masked up and I'm staying safe, I'm going to be fine. Well, on Saturday, I got the positive results back from the long mm. test. Yeah. So two right. negative rapid tests, one positive long test. And so- now, Scott, a lot of people are asking on our Facebook page because you had it this summer. Yeah. Have you been reinfected? I don't think so. I will get a test, of course, but with anything, like I'm obviously going to keep my distance from you. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be all up in your grill. Which you normally aren't. Exactly. So I'm going to do <laughs> what, my really? part. What, <laughs> really? You're not all up in your business? <laughs> but I do think, like, I think everyone has kind of seen that it's back and forth. Some people have been reinfected. Some people haven't. So I don't know. I will get a test today just to make sure. But I, I think it's been so soon. Like, I got it like two and a half months ago. I don't know if I'm able to get it again yet. I'm not a scientist, so don't quote me on that. But I'll get another test. So far, they're saying that reinfections are rare. Yeah, so that's what I'm kind of thinking. Right. So, Holly, how have you actually been physically with this? Because I know that our symptoms have been different. Right, which is weird because we have, obviously, we shared the the virus between the two of us. Um, I haven't been that great, I'll be honest with you. Um, I really started to go downhill on Friday evening. That was when I had my highest fever. It was like, which wasn't that high, by the way. It was like 103 Um, and then Saturday I was not, I didn't feel well for the most part. It was like a combination of, um, really achy all over my skin hurt, you know, that fluey feeling. Um, I had this, the low grade fever. I had, um, a like a small cough, nothing that I was like super concerned about. Um, but I also had, um, bathroom issues. So that's been part of my experience. Um, And so Saturday was rough. I did go to a walk-in clinic because by that point, I hadn't gotten my positive test back yet. (laughs) The doctor at the walk-in clinic was like, well, it sounds like you got COVID. I was like, okay. So um, Saturday afternoon, um, I got uh, the positive test back, but I was already feeling bad at that point. Sunday was pretty rough. Yesterday, was yesterday Monday? was um, I started to feel a little bit better. And then last night was actually the first time that I actually slept through the night mm. um, and didn't wake up and feel yucky. I like, I every night I would wake up in the middle of the night uh, multiple times and just feel, ugh. Mm. So it's been, it's been like having the flu for me. So, yeah. and I still have, um, right now I still have a fever. Uh, I still have a little cough. I still get a little like weird thing of like having to go to the bathroom like real quick. So mm. it's just, it's, it's been sort of lingering. And um, yesterday was the first day that I lost my sense of taste and smell. Mm. That sort of happened to me on Friday morning where I lost my sense of smell. And it was exactly what uh, Scott described when he had the coronavirus this summer, where I was in the shower and I had my shampoo going. And then I was like, wait a minute. I can't smell my shampoo at all. Yeah. And so then I run downstairs almost half naked and I'm like, <laughs> pull out the vinegar from underneath the, the sink, pull out the hot sauce. Like I can't smell anything. And it is the strangest thing to have a, a plate full of Valentina hot sauce in front of you and you can't smell anything. Like it is, yeah. it is the most random thing. But of course, in typical Miguel Fuller fashion, I didn't lose my sense of taste. I can taste everything just fine. And my appetite is just fine. Well, you can taste it, but not smell it. It is the strangest thing. And I was like, well, maybe I'm sort of just guessing what it's, what it, what it uh, tastes like, but. Because your sense of smell and taste are linked. Right. Which is weird. It's been so strange. 
But again, so like our our timelines were pretty different too. So that happened to you Friday. That didn't happen to me until yesterday. I think that might be one of, for a while. I don't know. For me, that seems like it was like the last thing to happen. And then I don't, I'm not as achy today. Right. Um, but like I said, I still have a fever. I still have slight cough and I still am congested. Now, Holly, a lot of people are asking, because we're live right now on the Miguel and Holly and Hot 101.5 Facebook page, um, how is your mom and your daughter? Okay, so um, that is tough. I mean, oh, right off the bat, let me tell you, so far, so good. Um, they, when I got my positive test, they began isolating upstairs. So my house, I have like two, two levels. The upstairs is basically its own separate apartment. Um, and so my mom and my daughter have been staying up there by themselves and I've been downstairs by myself and we don't open the, the kitchen door is like a regular like door to go to the outside. So it's like a sealed door, but there's window panes in it so I can see them. Um, mm. but I can't touch them obviously. Like I don't want them near me. And like, if we have to pass anything, like you would, it's like hazmat suit, like gloves, mask. Like yeah. there was a lot of tears over the weekend. I'll be honest with you because yeah. it's scary. It's really scary for my daughter. And of course I don't want her to get it. And I was like, I know I was going to cry about this, but I think I'm holding it together. Okay. But it's just, I want to be there for her because she's scared. Yeah. Um, but so far she doesn't have any symptoms and neither does my mom. So I'm just really praying that they don't. My person did um, take both of them and himself to get tested on Sunday and all of their rapid tests came back negative. But then again, so did mine. So right. I, I, we're waiting on their long form tests to come back, which may not be until Wednesday. But of course my daughter is home from school because that's what you do. Yeah, um, right. So she'll be quarantining slash isolating at home. But I just, it's, it's really unfortunate. She's got to like, the two of them are okay up there, but like, there's a lot of issues that my mom has because she had brain surgery and she's not like cognitively all there. So they, it's tough with each other and like seeing my daughter cry outside the door and I can't get to her. It's been really tough. Does she understand what's going on? Yeah, I think so. I mean, she, yeah. She knows and she gets it, you know? Um, but like so it, it goes back and forth. Like sometimes it's like, oh, this is fun. I'm going to slide you a note under the door. And then sometimes like when it was raining really hard yesterday, she was like terrified that there was going to be a tornado because my mom is like, like on it, like a weather person. She's like, oh, the yeah. hurricane's coming. And my, and my daughter's like, the hurricane is coming. And I'm like, no, it's not. Calm down. I'm, I'm right here on the glass. Like it, mm. it's been really <laughs> mentally very hard at my house. Mm. So we're trying I'm to get so through sorry. It. It's okay. It's just, it was very, it was like, I actually had to take some, some medicine to calm myself down yesterday because right. I, I had like, a, it was like an overload. I couldn't yeah. like, I, you know how, when you don't feel good anyway, it's like, um, everything is worse. Yeah. So, it's so I much. Didn't feel good. And then I'm worried for them. And, um, I'm hoping like if she, if their um, PCR tests, the non-rapid tests come back negative, I would love to send her to her dad's house so that she has a little more flexibility. My mom's apartment is so small. Right. Um, so if I can send her to her dad's house knowing she does not have this virus, then I would love to do that. But right now we're in limbo and we're just waiting for that test to come back. I think that's one of the biggest things to take away from this is that this is serious. I mean, and you see how you know, thankfully, as of right now, we all have pretty mild symptoms, Holly and I. Um, and there have been a couple of you that asked that Abe did test positive as well, my fiance. Um, and he had sort of a rough, he had a rough time with it this weekend, like you did, Holly, with the flu-like symptoms. Yeah, um, it, was, it, was, it wasn't terrible, but it like, it right. wasn't fun. I was, I no. wouldn't be like, sign me up for this, please. Right, this is so fun. And I've developed a little bit of a cough. Um, my doctor has prescribed me um, an inhaler that um, we're going to get delivered to the house here in a little bit just to make sure that everything is okay. Um, but just this is a caution that even, you know, we're all young, we're healthy, we work out, and we've done everything that we thought we could, but this is what it's like living in a pandemic. You know, you try your best to be as safe as possible, and this is what happens. So just stay safe. Wear masks, wear gloves, do what you need to do to be careful. And I know, especially as we're going into Thanksgiving, and I've already seen the posts of people being like, well, I don't want 
to not see my grandmother or whoever, but the alternative is not so great. It's and really so that's not. why we have to take the precautions to be as safe as possible. Holly. Oh, sorry. I'm so, I'm sorry. I I'm a little fuzzy also in my brain. That's all right. No, we have the, the COVID the, the COVID fuzz. Now I just thought you had something else to say. That's all. Oh no. I do, I'm, I don't. I just it's really hard because I just I want to know their status, my family's right. status and I don't know it right now. So I just I haven't even heard them upstairs, which I'm starting to get a little nervous because my daughter is supposed to be logging on to virtual school at 8 a.m. and oh. I haven't heard any thundering footsteps yet, which right. that means she may be still sleeping. So I need to go knock on the door <laughs> and call and be like, you up. So no, that's what's going on, girl? That's, 